Everything I've read says this just has to run its course. Uh, take over! The Sugar Cube Corner Ice Cream Museum is the only place where you can learn about the history of ice cream and admire whatever flavor you favor. <laughs> Come on, every pony. Today, we're going to learn about responsibility. Uh. By taking care of baby animals. Yay! I've been studying the techniques. Wanna give it a shot? Okay. All you have to do is keep your eyes on the star. You should begin to feel sleepy any moment. Just listen to the sound of my voice. Well, would you look at that. Apparently the whole time there were only eight shorts while Gen 4 was running. Actually, reviewing the first four had a lot to offer, so having volumes was still mandatory regardless. So, all things considered, you know what this means. I have my suit on, it's time to go over the second half of these shorts. So this is admittedly overdue since the first half of the official shorts were talked about a few years ago. But to shortly recap, I went over the following. Mystery Voice, which was okay. Triple Pony Daria, which was more entertaining than it had any right to be. Rarity's Biggest Fan, which was an idiotic concept to begin with and ended it mean spiritedly by using Spike. And The Great Escape Room, which was a madhouse but very fun in the long run. A majority of them took place during the holidays and one of them, well, existed. For anyone who hasn't been caught up with these shorts reviewed, definitely check that out first before proceeding. Having that said, the idea of making shorts was already weird to begin with, even when Equestria Girls had their shorts. But so far the first half did its job in entertaining with the span of a few minutes each entry. With a bit of a catch-22. The second half of these shorts haven't yet to be talked about is up in the air as to how these hold up. Unlike the previous entries, there's no specific holiday going on this time. Instead, this batch has a wider variety in silly scenarios than ever before. One of which is a bit of a retread, but I'll put a pin on that for now. So without delaying any further, let's spin the wheel. I've tried everything! Poultices, soup, a poultice made of soup, but nothing's helping Twilight get better! I told you, Spike. It's just a little spring allergy. <laughs> my horn. So something I should get out of the way here, I never liked any sick day narrative of any show. I never saw the appeal in watching someone be miserable with the potential of throwing in gross at humor by coughing or sneezing as oral fluids are being expelled. As far as friendship as magic is concerned, the only thing closest to reaching that kind of episode was Three's a Crowd. The only difference is, Discord was faking it the whole time, and thus I couldn't get any sense of discomfort before until up to the very end of the episode. And that was karma after he played up his antics and put Twilight and Kanan's in danger from the Tazzleworm. The same thing could be said with Spike and Winter Wrap Up. After his uncooperative behavior and getting Twilight into trouble, he got his comeuppance at the end by getting a cold after sleeping on the last remaining chunk of ice. Moltdown was something I should also mention since I stated that I had trouble identifying it as whether or not it was a sick day episode. Only to be told that it was puberty and that it was obvious under my nose the whole time. So, despite my personal baggage here, I was surprised at how funny this short turned out. It did have some glaring issues that knocked down a few pegs, but I'll put a pin on that for now. In the meantime, I did get some chuckles from the many mishaps the rest of the main six encountered. That was actually the central focus instead of Twilight being miserable. And comparatively, she was not only accepting that she needed rest, she was legit feeling bad for the others by her side effects as her sneezes ensued hijinks. This was better usage than jamming and gross-out humor. 
Personally, going over the victims, one of the funniest moments I found was Rainbow Dash's vocals getting replaced by sound effects. It's completely let feel that I couldn't help keep a straight face. The only thing I can imagine how frustrating it would be is having no proper way of communicating. The second of which to choose from was Applejack being flown uncontrollably. Additionally, she was being somewhat of a badass by knocking Rarity aside to take the blow from Twilight Sneeze, and then afterwards using her lasso to grip herself. And people kept saying she was a background pony. Such a pity. Rarity's predicament being the first to take effect was funny in an ironic way, simply because of how ignorant she was at touching the magic. Yeah, ideally it's part of her character where she takes fascination at glitters and shines, but I honestly thought she'd be smarter than that. So seeing her hoof become a roller skate, I was only thinking to myself, yeah, nice going dumbass, what did you think was gonna happen? So, unpinning what my glaring issues are, my least favorite moment was Fluttershy being in an icy cold state. This doesn't match up with the other moments as they were funny in their own ways. Comparatively, this was just cruel. It somewhat plays into what I don't like about sick day narratives, watching someone be miserable. And before anyone assumes it's because of Fluttershy, this predicament could have applied to any of the characters and that would not have changed my feelings on them whatsoever. Look no further than where I stood on Rainbow Dash, getting treated like shit in Super Speedy Cider Squeezy 6000. Approaching the second issue, the short ends with Pinky to the rescue as she brings forth a potion from Sakura. Upon taking it, everyone's predicament vanishes, with the side effect where Twilight is turned into a baby. Okay, I don't know what the writers were trying to implore here, but whatever. Additionally, she gets handed to Spike as everyone else ditches off. Really? You're making Spike a punching bag again? Seems like nobody learned their goddamn lesson after the complaints with Season 4. All things considered, this short had a lot of its moments, but that Catch-22 of an ending and Fluttershy's predicament didn't need to happen. It otherwise would have made a rather solid short. As is, enjoy the humor for what it is and not dwell on its shortcomings. What's your secret? Say some other pony wanted to be teacher of the month. What should she do? Well, um, I'm not exactly sure. So, unpinning what I said in the intro about retreading, here's another short that someone involves Rainbow Dash and Applejack. Kinda like with Triple Pony Daria, but this time it's more focused on Fluttershy. Even compared to that short, let alone non-compete claws, these two were just taking notes in consideration for Fluttershy's teaching methods. They aren't competing each other harshly like they did before, and instead they're eager for their own accomplishments. They're even both together when they set up a party that was based on all of Fluttershy's methods. Both of them wanted to get their picture on the wall, especially since Fluttershy has taken the whole rack, and I wouldn't blame them. In the long run, I would presume that if they ever did get together at scoring to get a place on the rack, there would definitely be some competitive nature. But brushing that aside, it's a nice change in pace instead of seeing these two bump heads with each other for once. I already touched upon this before in Volume 1, so I won't reiterate everything again. What I should mention though is that I was a bit closed minded on the very idea of the two competing with each other. This is because I was just annoyed that their chemistry was brought back to square one just for the sake of writing a plot on an episode. At the very least, I would have been fine if their competitive nature was just on a lighter side instead of butting heads into each other. But despite that, it's very focused on Fluttershy and how much of a natural she is at being a teacher. For the most part, it's a result of making the best out of any unfortunate predicament. It's not too bad of an obstacle, but because of how repetitive it gets, it becomes a bit lackluster for Fluttershy as she adaptively overcomes it to the point of dumb luck. I guess that's the joke since she never intends to score a ranking in the first place as every portrait is in the same pose. So I shouldn't be complaining too much here, especially since what she provides still works. Within the flashbacks, we're shown three scenarios. 
The first of which is telling the students to clean up after how invested you are in a class project. Yeah, it's annoying and it breaks your focus, but screw that. Let's play a happy tune that's the equivalent of cleanup. Okay, that's just levels of preschool and kindergarten. I mean, sure, but these are students who are at an older age. I grew detached from that jingle since I was like eight or nine years old. The second of which is when Fluttershy mentions responsibilities in taking care of animals after a long pause. Well, okay, that's just part of life. And who wouldn't want to take care of animals? The last moment involves having to cancel a field trip because of rain and yeah, that sucks. I know the feeling of excitement and anticipation only resulted in nothing afterwards. We've all been there. So what does she do? Bring a couple of board games. I wonder if what's brought here is Crossfire. Crossfire. Then again, it's probably Parcheesi, Sorry, or even Trouble where you move players from A to B. Pfft, screw that, Monopoly's boring as shit. All things considered, it does its job showing what Fluttershy is willing to bring forth, especially the last one. And hilariously enough, when Rainbow Dash and Applejack take Fluttershy's experience to their class, it bites them back in the ass as they thank Fluttershy out loud and inadvertently win another rank on the wall. A part of me does feel sorry for Dash and Applejack, but at the same time, I do hope they grasp a better idea on what works for teaching students. So far, this one was one of my favorite of all these shorts. It was a lot more wholesome and adorably funny at times as it was bringing a decent message about making the best of anything. Not afraid to say this, it's one of my recommendations. <laughs> I mean, am I interrupting something? I'll come back later. Uh, no, stay. I was just fixing Pinkie Pie's kite. Twilight Sparkle confesses to Starlight Glimmer that she has an irrational fear of ladybugs. Ever since this was out, everyone spotted a huge continuity error to the point where it's an elephant in the room. Sunshine, sunshine, ladybugs awake, ladybugs awake. It also doesn't help that GM Barrow was the writer for this short as she wrote many novel spin-offs in the series, like Twilight Sparkle and the Crystal Spell in 2013, which involved Cadence as well. To try to play the devil's advocate, the Sunshine Rhyme was dying down over the majority of the series to the point where it's no longer mentioned, and the writers probably forgot about it since then and focused on other plot elements. After all, I did mention that several writers didn't keep track of other scripts when discussing having expectations. The other possible reason is that saying the Sunshine Rhyme doesn't imply any visual encounters either as it's just a word. Either or, it's something that is called out for a reason, and there's a possible explanation behind it. At the very least, it's what I'm perceiving it as. With that said, the short dives into a comedic spin on having irrational fears. This can relate to a lot of people having something similar. The things we fear or having something that throws us off isn't as far-fetched as some would think. Most of the time, our phobias are either spiders, snakes, hornets, or a life-threatening creature of some sort. Those are normal phobias, of course, but sometimes these fears are triggered by any sense of movement or anything that can rub someone the wrong way, and the overall outcome of what everyone thinks is based on an uncontrollable defense mechanism. However, in this short, the fear of ladybugs does come off questionable at first since they're adorable insects. Fortunately, as Twilight may have had the word ladybug in the sunshine rhyme, she does explain her reasons behind it. When I was a filly, a swarm of them got into our house. Shining Armor told me that their spots were extra eyes, watching wherever you go. So creepy. <laughs> Okay, so here's two reasons why this phobia works more realistically than a lot of us would have expected. First off, a part of this is a typical scenario of any older sibling being a dick. As much as I love my older brother, he would always tell me something that is life-threatening of whatever it is that I encountered. I once stumbled upon a spray can to which he stated by proximity it would make my skin boil. Another time, I had a Happy Meal toy with a Woody Woodpecker label on it, and I would drink out of it since other bottles were an inconvenience to find. Only to be told that the toy bottle had venomous chemicals that could kill you in a few days. And he stated at one point that if I sneezed hard enough, my head would explode. Yeah, he did this because he knew how easily scared I would be, and he would always find it funny. So seeing Shining Armor say that the dots on the ladybugs have individual eyeballs doesn't sound too far off from what an older sibling can do. The second of which is that these dots being scattered everywhere on a ladybug would trigger an ancient defense mechanism in our brains called trypophobia. Some people may not know of this, but if you don't, it's basically a livid reaction of seeing clusters of small holes, bumps, or dots in irregular patterns. And because of how disorienting or how unnatural it looks, it rubs them so bad that they feel disgusted and creeped out. There have been some scenarios where they took these types of images and Photoshop rendered them into body limbs and such, making it look diseased just for the sake of pranking someone online. 
Needless to say, it's fucked up. Welcome to the internet, though. So seeing that these dots on the ladybugs are an indication as to how Twilight fears them makes sense in the long run. The short ends is Starlight attempts hypnotherapy. Successfully, it takes into effect until Pinkie Pie barges in with excitement on kite flying. This dampers the process on Twilight's therapy session, and boy, does she go nuts about it at Pinkie's expense. Well, uh, at least she's conquering her fears. If you put aside the continuity error, it's a fun short that can touch into a deep subject matter with a decent sense of cartoon humor. Definitely one of the better entries here, and certainly worth three minutes to kill. Wow! Twilight really likes her new kite! But why does she keep yelling at it to stop looking at her? <sighs> Crowdfunding for Golden Fox Pictures is supported by these following patrons. Signed Steel Rail, Azure Lore, Brandon Bishop, War Hero, Edwin Flores, Rainbow Dash Fan, Drog1989, Filmer Brony VA, Alexander Ziffy, Iceberg, Yeo Wolf01, Patrick Gardner, and Lance Wolfstar. Thank you all very much for your support. For any future projects you would like to know what I'm working on, support me on Patreon to anticipate any blog entries for sneak peeks, scheduled releases, what's in the works, and what's even on my mind. Links down to the description. <laughs> So finally we come to the last short to tackle, and honestly I don't have nearly as much to say as I did with the other entries. With that said, Pinkie Pie goes on a roll of ice cream puns as she hypes up Ponyville in presenting what is essentially an ice cream museum. She gets so carried away in fact that she completely forgets how much time she has left. This is especially considering how hot the day was as everyone is sweating and it's trying to cool down. And much like with the cakes, there was always a part of me that just wanted to tell Pinkie that she doesn't have much time and she should let everyone see it already. And as expected, the ice cream was melted. Okay, aside from Pinky using up too much time, didn't anyone think they should have set up some kind of cooling system before bringing out the ice cream in the first place? I know it's nitpicking, but even bakers know preparation based on what materials they use. Good. I can't stand eating cold things. Then why did you even come here, you dipshit? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's just racist. Yeah, should have thought about that, bruh. Some might argue that it's just plain predictable since everyone knows that ice cream melts in heat, but that's actually what brings tension into getting Pinky to stop and actually present it all before it's too late. It is done comedically, of course, and to her credit, she does a very good job at hyping everyone up. Aside from her dedication to making people happy, she goes as far as to hand out spoons for everyone, various candies and toppings for everyone, and mentions any type of favorite flavor for everyone. I just think that once again, Pinky and the cake should have prepared a cooling system. Just saying. It overall is a cute short that doesn't pull any strings or make any catches like the other ones have, and it's still appreciative of how one makes the best out of something when things don't go as planned accordingly. Pinky was up on all notches of excitement and for the right reasons, ending the short on a happy note as everyone else enters the museum regardless of the ice cream melting. Melted is my new favorite flavor! <laughs> and that's all the MLP shorts that I have finally tackled on. And on that note, I would like to make some concluding statements. I said before that it's weird making a set of shorts that are roughly a few minutes each, but that doesn't mean everyone else would think the same. I'm sure that some are completely okay with them, if they have a few minutes to kill, as others would just be happy with the fact that we had more ponies. And to its credit, each of them do their job at being entertaining, even if they do have their ups and downs. And for the sake of spicing things up a bit, I decided to show a brief rank of the following. Teacher of the Month ranks at the top as it has a Catch-22 that does a well enough job at Fluttershy's dumb luck, as well as having a wholesome nature about asking for advice and making the best out of an unfortunate predicament. The Great Escape Room ranks at number 2 as I'm admittedly biased towards it by the relatable status, but it does once again reflect on making the best out of something. Starlight the Hypnotist creeps up at number 3, which albeit has a ladybug plot hole, and those who aren't fond of Starlight in general would easily be turned off. But the short on its own has enough to take from in terms of phobias being portrayed realistically and comedically at the same time. That's pretty tricky to pull off. Mystery Voice comes at number 4, which was annoying but in a more cathartic sense, and ended it on a sweet note by putting Applejack to better use. Triple Pony Daria grew on me a bit as the competitive nature was silly at most, and Pinky cleverly ended the feud, thus ranking it at number 5. 
Number six was Sunday, Sunday, Sunday for once again making the best out of an unfortunate predicament. However, it was overly simplified and there wasn't much for me to add to it, which is why I placed it low on the list. Coming at the last two, Alicorn ranks at seven, which would have been higher if not for the spike abuse at the end and turning Twilight into a baby for no good reason in terms of writing. And last, and certainly the least, is Rarity's biggest fan, landing at the bottom for its tasteless ending and a rather dumb concept in general, even on paper. Now, this is my own list. Feel free to share me what your picks are. If you haven't checked them out yet, the links to all the shorts, including what Part 1 tackled on, will be listed in the description. Until next time, this is Golden Fox, and take care. Yeah.